Hey guys, Darren here again from Global Garage. This is our last one, console number six. And from the intro, we, we learned that this one boots up and everything, but has a bit of a cart slot issue. So let's, uh, ooh, it's actually a bit stiff. So yeah, that could explain the cart slot. Fire it up. And there's also audio buzz. Yeah, it's interesting. Quite a lot of, ah, here we go. All right, something interesting to play with. Hmm, that's really odd. Okay. Well, let's open it up, have a look. Could be a number of things causing that. Okay, so I've just uh, turned it over and I've pulled all the screws out. So let's uh, lift the case off. All right. It's nice under there. It's very clean. So the screws are all out from the RF shield. Just pull that off and put it aside. Now, let's just have a quick look for any signs of... Uh, any work. We've got some mismatched caps here. So we got, they're all blue except this one and this one that may have been changed. Okay, so I'm guessing we may have to do some soldering on this one as well to get it 100%. So I've just quickly pulled out the screws on the cart slot just so we can lift the board. So I'll do that. And there it goes. What's pretty cool about these Model 2s is they've got this piece of plastic here which just sits there. Um, and it supports the cart slot. So as you put cartridge in, it just gives it a bit more support on the base, keeps it nice and solid. So there's less flex in the board here. And uh, I guess, you know, so you go in their design of the Model 2, wanted less re recalls or less issues. So that was, a, you know, for a five cent piece of plastic or one cent piece of plastic, it's a really good idea. Let's plug it in and see what happens. We'll actually uh, check it for loose connections. So someone's done all these uh, links here, so I'm pretty sus actually on this area. We'll have to go over this and check it all out. So let's put a game in and see what happens. Okay, so it does power up. We're not getting the audio buzz this time. It's pretty clear actually. So just while we're listening, if we, if we move things around, so there's no power issue. Yeah, here we go. So if I move that, if I move that output there. We're getting we're getting uh, distortion and graphics and the audio. So okay, I think that's our problem. Right down there. So unless it's a cap or something, but I don't think so. Maybe this, yeah, it's this socket. All right, so I think we've quickly found our issue. Yeah, so it's actually not that power circuit. So the guy who ever did that, you know, it's not the neatest job, but it seems to work. The problem is actually over here on this uh, multi output circuit. So let's just quickly reflow these points and we'll test again. Okay, so I've just heated up the soldering iron and we're gonna have a quick go at this one. Uh, you can just hear a fan in the background. I've just turned that on because, you know, when I solder, I like to have air flowing past so I don't breathe any, any fumes in. Right, so let's have a go at this. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're just going to do one point at a time. These are all ground, I'd say, off the back here. So that's not the end of the world. But we'll start there because it's easy. Okay, can move around at the side here. It's always add a little bit of solder. It's not um not advisable just to remelt the old solder. Like you can, it's probably okay, but um, this new stuff's got a bit of flux in the center of it, which just helps it melt and all work. So it's a tiny bit. It's actually this pin right here, this one that I'm suspicious of. So I'll just flow that one. So I'm also going to quickly just reflow these these cart slot pins. Um, I'm going to tension them from up above as well. But you know, while we're here, while we're the, while the soldering iron's out, I'll just quickly go through each one and just reflow it. I 
I just turned it on before and tested it and it was better, but as soon as I moved the cartridge, um, I had fault, so let's just stabilize that. We'll clean it, we'll tension it, and we'll make sure all these points are all, all conducting, so. Okay, so to retension the Mega Drive 2, or Genesis 2, cart slot, it's actually a little bit different to the Model 1 we did in a previous video. Um, you can't quite see the tops of the pins directly, so they've got, got these holes, so you can still do the same sort of approach. So uh, if you put the uh, put your tool down, uh, probably this side's easier, you can still, there you go, you can still tweak them a little bit. And that's all it takes, just a little tiny tweak, just to bend the metal. And if you, if you go too far like that one, you can just easily flick it back, so it's not too, not too risky doing this process. So let's quickly go through them all. So you know, just flick them back, it's no big deal. It doesn't look like you're really doing much, but believe me, a little slight movement on the pin like that is enough to put a hell of a lot of pressure on the cartridge so that's all we do do it on both sides give it a clean and you're all set so fix those two up i'll just turn the board around and do the other side i prefer to do it from this direction and we'll give it a test okay so i've just put the board back in the tray for a second uh, just to give it support underneath the cartridge slot while I you know put the cartridge in, it, in and out a few times um, you really don't want to crack the board doing that I've reflowed the solder points we've reflowed the multi out connector points I've tensioned all the cart pins I've cleaned them with some contact cleaner and Actually, the last thing I will do is I will also clean in the uh, in the multi out there. That could be it as well. Maybe that's just dirty inside. So let's put it back together. Um, it's actually probably a good idea to put that in and out a few times while it's wet. Get it. Um, yeah, that's that's probably okay. All right. So the moment of truth. Let's put the game in. Yeah, it's nice and firm that now. It's really really tight. All right, power it on. So, yep, yeah, it's working. Okay, you can hear that. So, wait for the music to start. Okay, so if I just move the cartridge. Uh, yep, solid as a rock now. Okay, so that works. Power connect is good. And multi out seems good. Oh, a little bit of... Uh, let me just hold the camera up. I'm just moving the multi out right now. Yeah, look, it seems fine. Bit of a flicker. Yeah, it's, well, there we go. Okay, so I was just uh, moving this connector around while it was playing. Let me have another quick look at it. Okay, so I'm still a little bit suspicious of this multi out connector. It's 99% perfect, but I'm not quite sure if it's just dirty or maybe the actual it's damaged inside or stretched or maybe someone's forced the wrong size connector in or they've jammed something inside it so um, this is just a composite connector as i was saying earlier so what i might do is i might just grab an rgb scart one instead uh, you know that, that uses different pins of the connector so we can we'll be testing you know the red green blue the sync ground the power um, stereo audio, so we'll pretty much test all the pins with one connector, so I'll get an RGB, I'll plug it into a different TV and we'll have a quick look. Okay, so I've just wandered over to the testing, what kind of, my gaming area. Uh, I've got shit everywhere, so excuse the mess, but I've just balanced this thing on top of a Mega Drive 1. Um, yeah, it's all plugged in, RGB SCART. Uh, I've, got, I've got a Luva. TV which has RGB SCART, so that'll be fine. Let's power this thing up. Okay, we're instantly, we're good to go. Just put the picture into four by three. There it is. So this is RGB, so if you haven't seen it, it's an amazing picture quality. Like this is an old CRT TV, and look how good that is, that is neat. 
So, good news is, it's all working. So, you know, the camera, this, this is an iPhone 6 filming in 1080. It's not really going to do justice to how this looks. Uh, it's, it's hard to film a CRT because they flicker. So this one's flickering at 60 times a second, 60 times. So. But it's pretty good. So, all right, let's come back to this guy. And just as that's playing, I'll just move the connector. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's all perfect. They're just naturally cycled. Nothing at all. So that kind of tells me that could have been the cable. Could have been that old cable we had. That's interesting. So in RGB, which is how you should play these things, it's perfect. So I'll just have another quick look at that connector. So coming back to the composite video cable, I'm a little bit sus that it could actually be this cable. So the RGB cable over there worked perfectly. So let me just grab another composite cable. I'll plug it into that CRT TV and we'll see what it does over there. Okay, so I've just plugged in a dirty composite video cable just into the front inputs and that's running into the back. So let's power that on. Okay, so that works. Just doesn't look as good, does it? It's, I hate composite video. Let's wait for that to start up. Yeah, see how furry it looks and the colors are all washed out. Yeah, it's the worst. Okay, so I'm just gonna move this cable as it's playing. Yeah, that's solid as a rock, so let's get the light. Yeah, okay. So it might have just been the cable. So I, it, it definitely didn't hurt to clean that connector out, but this composite cable is fine. The RGB cable was fine. So now I'm happy that that's good to go. So. We'll leave it there. Have a quick look at my Sega thing on the top there. Top of an old Mark III. Okay, so I'm just putting this console back together and everything's fine, but I forgot to test uh, the reset switch down here. So doing a quick test, the, um, yeah, the button wasn't working. So I just thought I'd add this part of the video in just to show you guys how I fix that reset switch. So that, it doesn't work with the standard with the standard button here. So Underneath the button, it just pushes a piece of plastic down and it squashes the, the membrane and makes contact. What's probably going on is underneath that contact, it's probably a little bit dirty, but unfortunately to open these up and put it all back together without damaging it is a little bit difficult. So it still works, but you need to push quite firmly in the very center of it to make contact. and. There's other videos on YouTube to show you how to fix this. Some guys use tape and all sorts of things, but what I like to use is a box of just household nails and I'll show you exactly what I mean. You get, you get one that's approximately the right size to fit. I think you can sit perfectly in that reset, uh, little recess there. The head fits in perfectly. Uh, and if you test it, well, actually let's test it right now. We'll turn that on. You'll be able to hear the music in a second. Okay, so that's all, well, the console's working. Just let that intro start. Right, so if we just, if we push it normally, nothing happens, right? And that's what the problem is. But if you put this nail in, it resets fine. So it's just like a really direct press. So, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the lid, this is the reset switch. We're gonna put the, the nail in the hole, like it's actually got a hole already there, which is really easy. Um, it's obviously too long, so we're just gonna cut that down to size, this, this nail, and probably glue it into place. And we want we want the head to be you know right on the end of that, so, and that just gives it a nice direct uh, push. It's, it is metal, it's gonna, it, it might conduct, but this is a rubber membrane down here, so we've got no problem there, and it's gonna to conduct to nowhere, it's just a bit of plastic, so. I find a little household nail the absolute best way to go on that. So let me put that in place and I'll show you how it works. So I've, I've cut the nail down um, and now use some proper, you know, man size cutters for that. Don't be tempted to use little electronic ones, they're gonna break. So get yourself a nice, decent pair of side cutters, cut the nail, it's really straightforward, and then put it in place. Now it took me two attempts to get the, the length of this right. 
and that's fine just take your time and you want it to sit about there so pushing that right down it's about a millimeter off the base so you probably don't want it to sit right on the base or that could work as well but I think about a mil is perfect so that's all I'm gonna do there I'm gonna put a tiny bit of glue on that um, just so it doesn't fall out and that should be fine so let me reassemble and I'll show you what working Okay, so I've put that all back together, the, the nail head is in, and the game's running as you can hear, and we'll just give it a quick test. There you go, reset, perfectly. Try it again, perfect every time. So you don't even have to push it too hard. Just a nice little accurate push is what that nail head's going to do, so. Uh, if you haven't got a glue gun to put the, the nail in place, you don't really need it. Uh, you can just wrap a tiny bit of tape around the now just to give it a bit of friction inside that hole and, and that's it you're good to go all right guys that's it for this console it's all it's all uh chained up i'll put some product on that and that's the end of this one so all right guys i'll see you on the next video